Hi, this is video four of week two of the ISTF chapter funding workshop. Now we're going to consider how to develop a theory of change for your proposal, your project. So what is a theory of change? Well, it's a framework of cause and effect for how change can affect happen in a particular situation. You are going to describe how and why you think change will happen for your project. It explains why the selected pathway of action would cause the desired change. And why bother with this? Why do a theory of change? Well, this is a way to make your thinking more systematic. And the theory of change will set up the structure and indicators needed for the evaluation plan. Most funders will require an evaluation of progress towards your goals. So the theory of change helps you define your process, make explicit your assumptions, and think about the risks to a project. So how do you go about creating your theory of change? Well, first you have already selected a project problem that aligns with the objectives in your chapter strategic plan and um, with those the objectives of a potential funder and with your national framework for forestry outcomes. Then think about what the changes that you want to see in relation to that problem. This will relate to your overall goal. Then how can you achieve that result? that goal that you want to achieve. This involves building backwards or reverse engineering from the results you want to see to the activities that will help to make that change. This means that if we carry out a certain activity, we can expect certain specified results. So what are the components of a theory of change? Well, first I need to say there's no set way to do a theory of change. People, every, every person or group will come up with a different model. Daniel will do this differently for me. I am learning about this like you probably. And what I'm giving you here is my best stab at it, okay? And you might do it differently. So what I see as being the components for a theory of change are first the problem to be addressed, then the context or preconditions, factors that it could affect the course of change, social, environmental, political factors. These could be risks or barriers to success or be as opportunities resulting in higher probability of change. So there are also assumptions to consider. What are the conditions that are needed for the project to work? These need to be made explicit, not just to keep them a, a silent and implicit. Then we need to consider the inputs that go into a project so that it will be successful. This will include the funding from the funder, um, the activities you will carry out, or consider them to be interventions to lead to the hope for outcomes. There will be people involved. There could be other resources like a truck. Then consider the outputs, which are the results from the activities. And then the midterm outcomes, which is another way of framing the SMART objectives, which are necessary to reach the desired impact. So just go from SMART objectives, now they become the outcomes. Then because you've made, turned your objectives into SMART objectives, you're going to be able to derive measurable indicators, measures of progress for achieving those objectives. And those SMART objectives will lead to the long-term outcome or the, to the achievement of the overall goal you have stated for your project. And if the long-term outcome continues through time, it hopefully will lead to the desired change or impact. So here's a thim simple theory of change template. You can see here on the left, the problem to be solved, the preconditions or context, which exist as risks or barriers to success or opportunities, possibilities for change, and the assumptions that you need to lay out the conditions needed for success to occur. 
feeding into the project will also be the inputs, the activities you're gonna carry out, the financial backing, the people who invo are involved, other aspects. And as the activities are carried out, they will result in outputs, which are results from the activities. Going on, those outputs help you achieve the midterm outcomes or your objectives. And you have measurable indicators that show the out, the, the out, the impacts, the measurable effects. Then the midterm outcomes will lead to the long-term outcome or goal. And if the goal, if that continues enough over time, eventually get to an impact for the desired change. So let's go back again for an example theory of change to this little forestry project we're talking about, this reforestation project. The problem being people are cutting down trees in a reserve and we want to, as a goal, to provide fuel wood via plantations of fast growing species for an alternate wood source. So we've already stated three SMART objectives to help achieve this goal. So we're gonna train over two years, 10 youths in each of three communities bordering the reserve in tree forest, nursery management, tree planting, and plantation care. And the second objective, we're gonna have a plan and implement three tree nurseries with five species for firewood and a production we're hoping of, of a thousand trees per year per nursery. At the end of three years, then we're hoping to see good survivorship so that we can give a cash award to individuals or communities who reach a threshold level of a number of trees planted and a certain survivorship. So these are three goals with quantifiable or three objectives with quantifiable aspects to them that can be used as indicators to measure success towards those objectives. So here's just a model layout of what this theory of change for this little project might look like. So again, you have the problem, people are cutting down the trees, the pre-existing conditions that may lead to risk or opportunity for success. If the communities are not interested, well, that'll be a barrier to success. If the communities are worried about their wood supply, well, that might be an opportunity for success. Then you might have assumptions that you have to, of things that need to be in place for the project to be successful. Well, yes, that people are interested and that seed is available and that there's space for a nursery some in, in each of these communities. There may be other, there are other assumptions too that you would need to outline. So these all feed into the project success. And here we have the inputs that would be necessary for this project to be carried out, the funding, the activities, people to be trainers, youth and community members to be trained, space for the nurseries, seeds, land for planting, and then the care that will be given to the, the seedlings in the nursery and the trees that have been planted out. Then our outputs over time would be people trained, seedlings produced, um, surviving trees that have been planted out into the, into the plantations, and hopefully eventual wood production. So those are outputs and these lead to our outcomes, which we're seeing here that we've been, the outcomes that have been that we have youths that have been trained. We have the nursery that has been implemented and the awards have been given out if the thresholds have been reached. And so the indicators then would be the number of youth trained, maybe a measure of their skills gained in these different components of caring for these trees. Then an indicator for the nursery success would be the number of seedlings produced. And indicators for success for the planting and survivorship, well, the actual number of seedlings planted, the actual survivorship levels, and if they're high enough, you've got the success of having given those awards. And that long-term outcome there would be the production of fuel wood from the, the, these plantations of fast growing species. And if that continues on long enough, you might have an impact actually of redu reducing deforestation inside the reserve because of this project that has been implemented. Okay. So the next steps then, once you have developed this theory of change, 
and you're carrying out or you've carried out your project, you're going to be able to scale up to broader, larger proposals for your chapter or yourself as an individual. But to achieve success, you need to follow through rigorously on your activities and monitor for the expected results because you want a success re uh, to report at the end and that will help people develop confidence in you. Funders have confidence that you will be able to carry out the, another project. This may even help you go for larger grants. Now, ISTF Global needs to work to develop a theory of change based on its bylaws and objectives. And if we have a good theory of change for the ISTF Global, it may help the chapters um, to fit their plans into this broader theory of change. Again, this, the, this PowerPoint will be available. These links that I've found for how to develop a theory of change will be available. There's nothing special about these resources. They looked useful to me. Um, you may find others that are better. For your homework then, we want you to draft the theory of change for your proposal. Um, include the problem, context, assumptions, inputs, outputs, midterm outcomes, indicators, long-term outcome, and the impact. And part of this, especially the part with the indicators, we will go over again in more detail in a couple of weeks when we talk about evaluation for your project. So thanks for coming on board with this video and we will um, see you next week.